Now we will take a graphical look at limits and in most of the examples and problems that we look at here we will have a graph and you will be able to see what the limit of the function is. Just think of the limit as the value, that's the y value or the height toward which the function is headed as the x value approaches some particular value. Now an important point to make first of all and that's this, the limit of a function at a particular point is independent of the value of the function at that point. And here's what I mean by this. Suppose we have some function, and suppose this function is undefined at some particular point. So suppose there's a place here where there's a hole in the graph. And let's suppose that this is a, at an x value of 3, and this point, or rather lack of point, is at a y value of 5. So this function has a hole in the graph at the point 3, 5. Well, we can say that the value of the function at 3, well, it doesn't exist. So we say it's undefined, or we say the function does not exist at that point. f of 3 does not exist. f of 3 is undefined. However, if our x values get really close to 3, then we're getting really close to that hole, but not quite at it. And the y values are getting really close to a value of 5. So we can still say the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is equal to 5. So the point I was just making is this, that the limit can exist even if the function doesn't exist. And in this case, at the value x equals 3, the limit exists even though the function doesn't. And the reason the limit exists here is because every for every value of x near 3, the value of the function is near 5. And the closer x is to 3, the closer f is to 5. And even though the value of the function is never 5, we could make the value of the function as close as we want to 5. We could make it arbitrarily close to 5 just by keeping our x values sufficiently close to 3. Now take a look at this case. Suppose there was a, a point right here in our function. Right there at x equals 3, suppose the function has a value of 6. Just for that one point, right there. Now in this case we can say that f of 3 is equal to 6, so the function is defined at 3, but the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is still 5. And that's because as we approach 3, as we get really, really close to an x value of 3, we're getting really, really close to a y value of 5. So again, the point I was making earlier is that the limit of a function at a particular point is independent of the value of the function at that point, or even whether or not there is a value for the function at that point. In this case, the value of the function at x equals 3 is 6, but the function has a limit of 5 at x equals 3. That's because for all x values near 3, the value of the function is near 5. And the closer the x values are to 3, the closer the y values are to 5. And then, of course, we could have the trivial case where the value of the function is the same as the value of the limit. So in this case, instead of having a hole in the graph there, we could just have a regular graph. In other words, there's a point there that isn't any different from any of the other points along the graph. At this point, at an x value of 3, the function has a value of 5. So in this case, f of 3 is 5. And the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is also 5. So in this case, there's no discontinuity in the function. The value of the function at 3 is simply the same as the limit, which is 5. And in this case, you might not need to speak of the limit of the function as x approaches 3, but it still makes sense if you do so. For every value of x near 3, the value of the function is close to 5. And we can make the value of the function as close as we want. We can make it be as close as we want to 5 simply by keeping our x values sufficiently close to 3.